step back into the cinematic world of 1933 with the lesser-known gem, Son of Kong. While overshadowed by its colossal predecessor, King Kong, this film offers a unique perspective on the aftermath of the original's chaotic rampage through New York City. As you revisit this classic, consider the prominent Hollywood actor who graces the screen did their performance captivate you, making them your favorite. Now, let's delve into some intriguing facts and anecdotes about this cinematic piece. Unearth the hidden layers that add depth to the storyline and production. Are there behind-the-scenes tales that fascinate you, or perhaps some lesser-known trivia that enhances your appreciation for this 1933 creation? Reflecting on personal connections, what is your most cherished memory or experience related to Son of Kong? Your stories enrich the tapestry of this classic, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Share your insights and memories with fellow enthusiasts who, like you, appreciate the timeless allure of Son of Kong. Capturing the essence of a bygone era, this film not only entertains but also provides a glimpse into the cinematic landscape of its time. Uncover the nuances that make Son of Khan a distinctive piece in the rich tapestry of Hollywood's history. What classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? And are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Robert Armstrong, who played the lead in the 1933 movie Son of Kong, favored the sequel over the original for its enhanced character development. In contrast to King Kong, Andero and Jack Driscoll are notably absent, both unseen and unmentioned in this follow-up film. An interesting tidbit is that Carl Denham's landlady shares a name, Mrs. Hudson, with Sherlock Holmes' landlady. These aspects shape the unique narrative of Son of Khan, adding layers to the story beyond the iconic giant ape. The film diverges from its predecessor in focus and characters, providing a fresh perspective on the aftermath of the Khan saga. The Styracosaurus model featured in the 1933 movie Son of Khan found an unexpected owner in Peter Jackson. This relic from the film, a testament to the bygone era of stop-motion animation, now resides in the possession of the renowned filmmaker. The transition from the original King Kong to its sequel was marked not only by a shift in narrative focus, but also by the financial aftermath. Son of Kong's underwhelming performance at the box office led RKO to temporarily abandon the production of giant ape movies until the release of Mighty Joe Young in 1949. The lukewarm reception of Son of Khan became a decisive factor in shaping the studio's cinematic choices. Interestingly, the design for Kiko, the offspring of Khan in the sequel, underwent a significant transformation. It wasn't merely a continuation of the 1933 Khan's legacy. Instead, it involved a repainting and redesign, offering a fresh take on the iconic character. These behind-the-scenes details contribute to the intricate history of the 1933 movie Son of Khan, shedding light on its impact on both the film industry and the creative evolution of its legendary characters. From ownership shifts of cinematic artifacts to studio decisions influenced by box office outcomes, the sequel's legacy extends beyond its runtime, revealing the nuanced dynamics of filmmaking in the early 20th century. Released just nine months after the original King Kong, the 1933 movie Son of Kong swiftly followed its iconic predecessor. This quick turnaround reflected the industry's eagerness to capitalize on the success of the giant ape franchise. The film's earliest documented telecasts occurred in various cities, including Philadelphia, Memphis, and San Francisco, marking its television debut in the mid-1950s. Despite being a sequel, Son of Kong had its own set of challenges, both on and off-screen. Behind the scenes, tragedy struck during the production as the wife of Kong animator Willis O'Brien fatally shot their two sons and attempted suicide. This devastating incident left O'Brien shattered, leading him to steadfastly refuse any discussion about the film. Even O'Brien's protege, Ray Harryhausen, remained in the dark about the making of Son of Kong, as the memories were too painful for O'Brien to revisit. The film's history is marred not only by its rapid release, but also by the personal tragedy that befell one of its key contributors. This quick sequel not only faced the shadow of its predecessor, 
but also the harsh reality of the industry's demands. Son of Kong's expedited production and the subsequent personal tragedy surrounding its animator contribute to a nuanced understanding of the film's complex legacy, extending beyond its runtime and shedding light on the darker aspects of filmmaking in the early 20th century. Marion C. Cooper's excitement for the 1933 movie Son of Kong was dampened when he learned he had less than half the budget of King Kong and only six months for production, aiming for a Christmas release. This constrained timeline and financial pressure set the stage for a challenging production. The working title, Jamboree, hints at a different direction that the film could have taken. The film's struggles behind the scenes mirror the urgency imposed by the industry's demands. Interestingly, Robert Armstrong, who portrayed Carl Denham, and executive producer Marion C. Cooper passed away within a day of each other in 1973. Their deaths marked the end of an era, adding another layer to the complex history of Son of Kong. These off-screen challenges, combined with the expedited production, underscore the harsh reality of filmmaking in the early 20th century, shaping the film's legacy beyond its runtime. In an unexpected turn of cinematic history, one of the scenes from Son of Kong involving pterodactyls found an intriguing second life. To save on production costs, the scene was later matted into Citizen Kane during a crucial moment where Kane and his associates head to the beach from Zanadu. This subtle integration of Son of Kong into the iconic Citizen Kane adds a layer of cross-film connectivity, showcasing the practical considerations that often shape the behind-the-scenes decisions in the world of filmmaking. While Son of Kong might be known for its connection to the King Kong franchise, an interesting tidbit adds depth to the sequel's legacy. Although the name Kiko was assigned to the Junior Kong, it was never used in the film. RKO's promoters coined the name after the completion of Son of Kong, choosing Kiko as an abbreviation of the legendary King Kong. This behind-the-scenes detail adds a unique facet to the film's history, highlighting the creative decisions made outside the camera frame. As we delve into the lesser-known aspects of Son of Kong, it's essential to acknowledge Nils Hellstrom, portrayed by John Marston, the Norwegian captain who provided Carl Denham with the map to Skull Island before the events of King Kong. This connection between the two films underscores the intricate world-building that took place behind the scenes. Nils Hellstrom's contribution becomes a crucial link in the overarching narrative of the King Kong universe. In exploring these lesser-known facets of Son of Kong, from its unexpected cameo in Citizen Kane to the unused moniker Kiko, and the connection between the two Kong films, we uncover a richer tapestry of Hollywood history. These details, often overshadowed by the more prominent aspects of the films, contribute to a nuanced understanding of the 1933 movie Son of Kong and its enduring impact on the cinematic landscape. As we bid adieu to the enthralling world of Son of Kong, let's not merely close the chapter but embark on a reflective journey into the recesses of our cinematic souls. This 1933 masterpiece isn't merely a celluloid spectacle, it's a time capsule that preserves the echoes of a bygone era, inviting us to delve into the nuances of our personal connection with its captivating narrative. As the credits roll and the echoes of Max Steiner's haunting score linger in our minds, I implore you to pause and ponder. What chord did this classic strike within you? Was it the endearing bond between Carl Denham and the lovable Khan J.R.? or perhaps the uncharted territories of Skull Island that stirred your imagination. Take a moment to sift through the memories, the emotions, and the subtle nuances that make Son of Khan a perennial treasure. We invite you to share your thoughts, your favorite scenes, the moments that etched themselves into the tapestry of your cinematic heart. Let this platform become a canvas for your reflections, a space where enthusiasts converge to celebrate the magic of Son of Khan together. Your stories, your insights, they weave a richer narrative around this cinematic gem, breathing life into the pixels and frames that continue to resonate through time. In this collective journey of reminiscence, let us bridge the temporal gap and revel in the fact that, just like the mighty Khan JR, the legacy of this film stands resilient against the relentless tides of time. So, dear reader, viewer, the stage is yours. Unleash the nostalgia, share the anecdotes, and let the magic of Son of Kong bind us in a tapestry of shared memories. Thank you for embarking on this nostalgic odyssey with us, for your time, your passion, and your unique connection to the silver screen. Until we unravel another celluloid tale, may your memories of Skull Island 
and its towering inhabitants be ever vivid.